So it's been a few days since I've actually watched Scream 6. And in those days, I have rewatched Scream 5 to give a little bit more context to this particular review. Now, my thoughts on Scream 6. Scream 6 was a lot of fun. Uh, I felt it had CW channel uh, type uh, teen romance, even though these folks are all adults and they're in college and stuff, and some are even beyond that. But between uh, Chad and Tara and then Sam and her next door neighbor, it's kind of like CW kind of romance. Uh, also, uh, I thought a ridiculous thing with the movie, and the movie, it is a little, I guess it's a fun movie, it's a little bit ridiculous, is how the core four, uh, it being uh, Tara, Sam, Chad, and his sister, whose name I'm forgetting right now, they can take an ungodly amount of abuse and still live. I'm talking about getting shot, stabbed multiple times, falling off of balconies, having knives twisted in uh, their bellies, and I mean... This was already seen in Scream 5 in the very beginning when Tara, who was Jenna Ortega from Wednesday fame, uh, she gets pretty much butchered in the beginning of Scream 5 and she still lives. So there's this, this uh, that, that thing, that superhuman ability to withstand all those abuse goes into all four of them uh, where they can all now get super stabbed super killed over and they're still alive which is i found ridiculous but funny as well it reminds me of a joke from uh, i think the first naked gun movie where oj simpson's character he's a cop and he gets shot multiple times and then when uh, frank drebin played by leslie nielsen he goes to visit him in the hospital and the doctor's like he survived he uh, the the shooters missed all the vital organs the thing that i found the most interesting uh development from watching re-watching scream 5 and then watching scream 6 was how uh sam and tara and it was more noted in the finale for this movie they seem to enjoy killing it, it's in self-defense they're not going out and doing it and then also with uh sam uh, her character how billy loomis her father is always kind of like talking to her and pick up the knife and defend yourself and and uh you start to see them like smile a little bit when they're doing it where it, it feels like one of them could eventually become the ghost face killer down the road because uh like i said they're getting like a joy and then billy loomis is always talking to sam and like she's just kind of more accepting of this where in scream five she was more like rejecting it rejecting it, and now she's like yes accepting it more i can use this for self-defense and the reveal of the killers uh in this particular movie scream six it made sense but it was a little anticlimactic, I felt. But uh, for the first time in Scream history, like I said, once again, spoilers for this review, there's three killers. There's, always, there's been two, there's been one, but there's never been three. And in this movie, there are three killers. There were plenty of kills, uh, but the thing that I really like stood out to me was the sound. Every time you hear like the knife go into somebody, like you really hear like it, it, it sounds, it, you can hear it and you can almost feel it. You know, I, I very much enjoyed the, the sound in the movie. Uh, I I also enjoyed the twist in the very beginning of the movie where there are these two uh, like college students who are dressing up as Ghostface and killing people. And it's kind of like they have a shrine, like a little shrine built to Ghostface in their apartment. Uh, you'll see a bigger shrine later in the film, but they're doing this... Uh, like out of adoration and there's i have to rewatch the movie because they give a better reason uh, as to why they're exactly doing it but they're like getting their thrills from dressing up as ghostface and killing them but then the way the movie begins is the fin the killers that you end up meeting you know throughout the movie and through in the finale they end up killing those like kind of fan uh, killing people if that makes any sense there were a ton of homages to other movies uh hellraiser uh halloween i mean the series is built on this i mean the characters called loomis and and things like this is built on homages to uh past horror movies but in this one uh, there's a ton of them and there is a variety article where i'll leave a link to on the blog at paulhasfun.com that has all of the it's like over a hundred excuse me it's like over like 50 homages to different movies 
And of course, there's always those moments where in these horror movies, characters make dumb moves or they make stupid decisions. Like in the very beginning, you see Samara weaving, uh, who ends up being a, becoming a victim of these fan ghost face killers. Uh, she goes into a dark alley in New York City. Like, what? Why would you do that? In New York City, go into some dark alley. Uh, that didn't make any sense. Uh, the legacy characters, in terms of Hayden Panettiere uh, and uh, Courtney Cox, they were great in the movie. You know, I, I made a joke about this in, uh, in my Ant-Man review, which I haven't published yet, but I will, where there's this joke uh, on TikTok where Mayor Cuomo, uh, it's a quote, and the way it's, the joke is on TikTok is basically this is everything that you see on TV where he says, I am black, I am gay, I am a woman, I am disabled. And this movie, of course, delves into that like so many other popular movies today. But I don't mind that when the story is either engaging, fun, or it's cool. So I didn't mind that so much in this. Also, another kind of goofy thing in the movie was Hayden Panettiere being an FBI agent. The way that she was dressed and stuff, like, I did not buy that for a minute, that she was an FBI agent. Um, I prefer Scream 5 over this one, because I, I liked when it talked about, uh, like, toxic fandom and how that's so relevant today with so many franchises, and also the, the kind of the difference between fans really loving something and just kind of like speaking out about it and and just like wanting to let the new creators know hey i i'm a fan of this but you're going the wrong direction and it crossing the line between it being toxic fandom i really enjoyed that message in scream 5 and this one uh it doesn't really have that kind of message that message, right, that I was talking about before, it's really kind of like modern day uh, discussion of something that's happening on a regular basis with all the big properties, whether it be Star Wars, Marvel, or uh, any kind of old movies that are being rebooted like a Halloween and stuff like that. And it doesn't have that kind of, um, kind of commentary in this Scream 6 movie, but still this movie was a great time. It was a lot of fun and I, I felt satisfied after watching it and I didn't feel like I wasted my time in the theater. But but if you've seen Scream 6, let me know what you think. Post your thoughts and comments down below. And to all the people who come up to me and tell me, it's not a lot of people, but I'm saying to all the people that I run into and they tell me that they watch these reviews, I am so grateful. Thank you so much for watching. But like, comment below. I want to hear what you have to say. And I will talk to you in the next one. Peace.